Today's project is a real change of pace. I'm going to take you on a complete video walkthrough as I install this Quincy 7.5 horsepower air compressor with a max package and an hour meter with a custom designed mount. This compressor was so large on the pallet it barely cleared the garage door with a finger's width of clearance. It was time to upgrade my old iron horse which had been around since Ronald Reagan was the president. The tank had sprung a leak so I was in the process of stripping it down and forming a new modular twin tank air compressor using a hand truck. In the meantime, my heavy-duty Siamese motor twin-cylinder air compressor was pressed into action. It does a great job with the pop-pop-pop of an air nailer, but when it comes to an air motor, it just can't handle it. This clip shows exactly how long it took for that air compressor to run out of power and stumble and stall as I tried to sand away this material. It was a frustrating experience as I continuously feathered the trigger just to get it to work. Most portable air compressors on sale at home centers are not suitable for mechanics tools such as these. When I plugged it into this portable sandblaster, it huffed and puffed like the big bad wolf with emphysema. It didn't have the power to strip away rust and paint. Even my old compressor was not capable of the air power my new tools needed to come to life. I spent a great deal of time researching the air compressors from many different manufacturers, from Ingersoll Rand to Emacs, Northstar, and several others. Quincy air compressors are American made with a very long reputation for dependability and reliability and it was my first choice. A key factor in my decision was Quincy's 50,000 hour pump life rating. My next decision was which size air compressor should I buy. My sandblaster and pneumatic vacuum press required a minimum of 5 horsepower. If you make the decision to order such a large air compressor, beware it takes some heavy equipment to move it. The Quincy Max package with its automatic tank drain, low oil shutoff, and heavy duty after cooler really got my attention. My last compressor died of a leaking tank, so an automatic tank drain was a high priority. Here you can see I'm platforming my pallet to make room for my engine crane. With the compressor cribbed up, let's continue to talk about the choices. The aftercooler is a radiator which cools the air charge and removes condensation which improves the life and performance of air tools. This is especially important with paint sprayers and sandblasters. The Quincy air compressor was much too tall for my engine crane to lift it from the top. So once again I had to improvise a solution. I lowered the lifting chain through a cutout in the motor mount platform. Feast your eyes on my improvised solution as I discuss the reasons why I chose this particular model. I chose a vertical model because of its bowl-like central drain. A horizontal model has a long channel of water that will gradually rust through the tank because it doesn't drain completely. Quincy was selling the 7.5 horsepower with the Max package for the identical price of a 5 horsepower with a max package, so my decision was a no-brainer. I most often work alone, so as this tank was dangling, I lowered the pressure and just put my back into it. The Quincy manual required this compressor to be anchored loosely to the floor with concrete anchors. I carefully marked the location of the four anchor bolts with permanent marker, then I had to move the compressor to begin the drilling process. All the concrete dust must be extracted from the hole to get an accurate depth measurement. I inserted the anchor upside down to measure how much extension I would have above the surface. I threaded the washer and nut and used it as a depth stop to ensure consistent results with all four studs. To ensure accuracy, I measured from the installed stud to the center point of the next hole before I drilled it. With all the anchors installed, I'm taking one final measurement before I swing a 750 pound air compressor over four one and a half inch studs. The compressor placard reads 30 amps, so I bought a 30 amp 220 volt plug and a 10 gauge two conductor SO cable. Read the instructions carefully and strip back each cable according to the measurements. The ground lead is the longest. Both conductors must be cut back and then stripped to fit properly in the plug. It's much easier to tighten the conductor screws by using the plug as a clamp. I methodically laid out all of the components of the wall mounted manifold. Then I began my assembly line process by wrapping all the male threads with Teflon tape. 
I held the tape with my thumb and then unspooled the tape backwards around the pipe, pulling tightly as I went. To prevent leakage, three full wraps around the pipe are recommended. I purchased a Milton brand air pressure regulator and moisture separator with a one inch capacity. Milton produces one of the highest quality air pressure regulator products in the industry. To change the regulator mounting direction, I have to swap the gauge mount with the dummy plate on the reverse side. Be sure to observe the airflow direction as indicated by the arrow on the top. The moisture separator air filter is installed prior to the air pressure regulator to prevent contamination from breaching the regulator mechanism. I found my mistake and swapped them prior to plumbing them into the air compressor system. This Milton moisture separator has an automatic bowl drain. To remove the bowl, press the release button and rotate. Be sure to observe the airflow direction before connecting the two components. The lower line I'm installing here is a drain leg with a shutoff valve. Its purpose is to remove any condensation that collects in the tube. Be sure to observe the airflow direction before connecting the two components. With a stud finder, I marked the location of the studs and pre-installed the screws for a fast, one-handed installation. Although the wall mount is level, the line will actually pitch toward the condensation drain. I am mounting the air pressure regulator to the wall mount with lag screws. Pipe clips will also be added to reduce vibration. The lag screws were installed in pre-drilled holes to make the installation easier. I marked the location of the other lag screw and then I tipped the mount to allow clearance for the drill. It was very beneficial to create a sub-assembly. It made the installation easier, faster, and I had no leaks. A high pressure rubber hose is added to the air compressor to isolate the vibrations from the wall mounted manifold. Attach the male end of the hose to the air compressor and tighten it prior to attaching the female slip coupling to the manifold. This will prevent twists and kinks. The St. Louis style arch of this hose prevents condensation buildup which can lead to deterioration and premature failure of the hose. With the plumbing complete, it's now time to turn our attention to the electrical connection. Carefully cut the rubber sheathing with a knife. If you accidentally nick one of the conductors, remove that section of cord and start again. Now twist the sheathing and look for small bridges of rubber sheathing that you can carefully cut away. To protect the cord from damage, I ran it behind the compressor, through the notch in the main frame, and then out through the front access hole. With the knockout plug removed, attach the cable clamp with the gland nut and then tighten it securely. The blue accordion tube was primarily added for aesthetic reasons, but nevertheless I secured it with the cable clamp to prevent dust infiltration into the junction box. I stripped the black and white conductors and installed them into the L1 and L2 terminals and tightened them securely. It doesn't matter the order, it's a 220 circuit and both of them are equivalent. Although I installed a ring terminal on the ground wire, it would have been easier if I had used a fork terminal so that I could just loosen the ground screw and attach it instead of removing it completely. It proved to be very difficult to start the ground screw by hand in such tight quarters. I dropped it several times before I improvised a solution. I grabbed a set of spark plug pliers, grabbed the screw, and threaded it in. The break-in period for the Quincy air compressor is 50 hours. At the 50-hour interval, the oil must be changed. Each subsequent 200-hour period also requires an oil change to meet the Quincy warranty requirements. To keep track of the hours, I bought a true meter, hour meter, to install on the air compressor. Neither Quincy nor true meter gave any instructions on how to install the meter. I checked other videos and I saw people butchering their machines. I decided that I would build a much better mount that wouldn't violate the warranty. So I designed a 3D printed mount that could be installed easily with only common hand tools and no cutting required. The use of a store-bought mail adapter allows for very fast, easy installation and easy adjustment. 
I disconnected the power at the wall before making any connections inside of the electrical junction box. The installation couldn't have been faster or easier. Remove the lock nut from the mail adapter, thread the wires through the hole in the junction box, install the lock nut and tighten it. I stripped the wires and installed an insulated spade terminal to one wire and a ground fork to the other. Now loosen a ground screw, slip the fork terminal under it and tighten it securely. I needed to find a source that was only on when the compressor was running. The main conductors were connected to terminals one and two so they were hot all the time. To safely determine if pin number three was only hot when the motor was running, I attached my voltmeter from ground to pin number three with alligator clips. Then I plugged the compressor in and the voltmeter was reading less than two tenths of a volt. So I bled off the air pressure. The contactor snapped shut and the voltmeter kicked immediately up to 120 volts. So I connected the hour meter to terminal three. I fed a little slack back up into the gauge mount for easier installation. The installation of this hour meter took approximately 15 minutes with common hand tools and no cutting required. With the compressor running, it's time to do an operational check. Waiting six minutes for the meter to click one time felt like a lifetime. The gauge mount is very ergonomic. It's angled 15 degrees up and pivoted towards center to make reading it very natural. It includes an integrated eyebrow that keeps the lens dust free. The air pressure regulator is mounted with the gauge angled to line of sight, making reading it much easier. To adjust the air pressure, pull down the knob on the air pressure regulator until you see the orange sleeve. Rotate the knob to the right to increase the pressure. When the desired pressure is achieved, reseat the knob. On this small compressor, the air pressure regulator controls the line pressure and the tank pressure, and it's set to 100 pounds. On the Quincy, there are two different regulators. The tank pressure is set at 175 pounds, and the line pressure is set at 90 pounds. This is an 85 pound reserve before the line pressure begins to decrease. Now it's time to set up the automatic tank drain. The automatic tank drain has two settings. A dwell setting, how many seconds will the valve stay open, and a frequency setting, how many minutes in between each turn on cycle. If the compressor does not get used very often, increase the frequency to decrease the amount of condensation remaining in the tank. This Milton air chuck has a relief valve that can be used to safely bleed off air pressure prior to removing the hose. Extra care must be taken with ordinary air chucks when disconnecting the hose to prevent it from whipping uncontrollably like a loose balloon. A safety chuck allows for easy one-handed operation. A very convenient way to tame a wild air hose is using a garden hose reel. Notice I folded it in half before I threaded it onto the reel. Now it'll coil and uncoil in half the time. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. If you did, please leave a comment, a like, and a share. Subscribers are always welcome.